Asher was left out of an important decision once and it led to some legal troubles for JLo. The song in question here is Get Right. Get Right was written by Usher and producer Rich Harrison for Confessions. The album was released by Usher in 2004. The song was originally called Ride. The thing was, it wasn't good enough for the album or something went wrong, either way it didn't make the cut and vault tracks weren't common yet, so the song sat there until JLo was interested. Harrison decided to give the track to JLo, presumably without checking with Usher first if his reaction is anything to go off of. Usher claimed he didn't sign off on the decision and was quick to demand demand publishing rights. Obviously, the song made it out on JLo's side as it was released and is now considered a fan favorite. Seanette Harrell sang the chorus to popular JLo song If You Had My Love, but was credited as just a background singer. Having others lend vocals to songs is super common in Hollywood. In recent years, it's more common that people will sing the majority of their song and other voices will truly be background vocals. It seems in this case, Harrell might not have been credited properly if she really did sing the chorus and JLo was just lip syncing along. Likely though, JLo did put some vocals in there mixed in with with uh, Harold handling the brunt of it. As for crediting the person as a background singer, the vocals were mixed in a way that the background vocals typically were, plus there is no way to actually know if JLo was the one to sign off on that. Christina Milian is now a singer and actress. You might recognize her from the Netflix movie Falling in Love, the Kim Possible theme song, or the JLo song Play. Christina co wrote the song and did record some vocals for it, vocals that can be heard on JLo's version of the track. But as we know now, that did not happen. But JLo did kind of steal her work. Not really, because she would have had to get permission, but you know what I mean. People thought maybe Christina felt negatively towards JLo. It turns out that is very much. Much not the case. In an interview with Page Six, Christina got to clear up any rumors swirling around the internet. She said there is nothing malicious between her and JLo. She talked quite highly of the singer and even explaining that she was okay not being fully credited for the track, saying, hands down, she killed it. She's so good. I love that song. I'm on the credits for whatever nature as a writer and for singing backgrounds. There is credit for that. I'm also just so happy that she did it because she's an icon. She's amazing. It's funny when people talk about this being kind of a thing about me singing on the song with Jennifer. I mean, I have background singers on some of my songs. It's no different than Michael Jackson having background singers on songs or Britney Spears. This is what music is made of. You want a blend of voices. It makes songs better to me. She even clarified why the song went to JLo, explaining that she liked another party song she had written more, AM to PM, and figured that only one would make the album, so she passed on play. JLo caught it and recorded it, doing some rewrites with Christina, and then it was off and hitting the charts. Ironically, it could be argued JLo's song, I'm Real, is not very real at all. Ashanti is the real deal here, at least when it comes to the chorus and ad libs and the writing of the song. Allegedly, the song I'm Real by Jennifer Lopez was written by Ashanti. She sung the demo that was given to JLo. Usually, artists, when they get demos, they just use it to see what the song will sound like. Then they re record the song because it's their song now and they want their vocals. At least that's what one might think. In this case, and a few more cases, that we've looked at and will look at. It looks like JLo did not re record anything, just kept the demo vocals and the ad libs. Ashanti received credit for background vocals, but the co writing credit was nowhere to be found. So while JLo likely got permission from either the performer or the company, it wasn't a good look in the eyes of the public. To make the entire situation worse, JLo, who is Puerto Rican, used the N word on the track that was met with the appropriate response and call outs. I'm Real was so successful successful that Ashanti did write for JLo again, so there must not have been too much bad blood between the women. She came back to write Ain't It Funny, also adding some ad lib vocals into this song. She did get to appear in the music video for this one. It's hard to imagine any JLo song being more popular than Jenny from the Block, but for a brief moment, all I have was the moment. While most of the song was JLo's vocals, part of the chorus was sampled from Deborah Law's song Very Special. Very Special came out in 1981 and JLo's song in 2002, so quite a bit of time between the two. Sony did get permission to use the sample, however, no one told the original singer, Deborah Law, so she took JLo to court. The case was dismissed, she tried again, and it was dismissed again. Specifically, she went to court over the sample, but that doesn't mean it was Law's vocals on the JLo track. The part of the chorus that wasn't JLo was a woman named Makiba Riddick. Riddick was with Rock Nation at the time. Makiba does have a connection to another famous track, Love the Way You Lie, featuring Rihanna. She produced Rihanna's vocals. 
This one is mainly a fan rumor and speculation. Kunela Cox was a background singer on Jennifer Lopez's tours and was possibly a vocalist on her hit song Love Don't Cost a Thing. Love Don't Cost a Thing is one of JLo's biggest hits, so it makes sense it would eventually be examined with a magnifying glass, or I guess just a good ear to pick apart to see if JLo is singing. Some fans would argue that in parts of the song, she isn't, that instead of JLo's vocals being heard, it's actually Cox. Cox is not that big of an artist, unfortunately, though she is very talented. She released some of her own music and albums back in the early 2000s but they didn't do very well. A leaked demo caused people to listen to Lopez's signature track, Jenny from the Block, a little more closely, as it was rumored that JLo didn't even sing part of her most popular tune, and that some vocals actually belonged to Natasha Ramos. Of all the people on this list, Natasha is probably one of the most outspoken. She has used her multiple social media accounts to prove her involvement with the hit song. Using her ex account, she tweets out her demo for the song, telling people to compare for yourselves. However, that was mainly in response to people saying she was lying about ever being involved, involved with the track. Back in 2019, she tweeted a short summary of her involvement, writing, I just want to clarify something. JLo did indeed go into the studio and lay down some background vocals over mine. So I wouldn't say she's so much lip syncing. However, the backgrounds are predominantly me, some ad libs, and laughs as well. So that is nice to get cleared up. JLo is technically still singing her biggest song, just with a little more help than we may have thought. Social media star Samantha Barbash was the inspiration behind the critically acclaimed film Hustlers, produced and starring Jennifer Lopez. Samantha, however, does not appreciate the film and actually sued JLo and her company for defamation. Samantha shared her perspective on the situation in an interview with TMZ. She said, They basically stole my story. I wouldn't sign my rights away. I wasn't giving away my film and TV rights for peanuts. JLo doesn't work for free. Why would I? Further claiming that 87% of the film made Made was wrong. Samantha's case was ultimately dismissed. Brandy might have been the one mad at JLo for taking her song, but she has also now accidentally, maybe purposely, roped herself into the feud between Mariah Carey and JLo. Let's start with the Brandy drama. Brandy wrote a song called Ride or Die for her album, Aphrodisiac. The problem was there was a bunch of delays with the album, and for some reason, those delays meant that Brandy no longer had the song and it went to JLo for her rebirth album. Ride or Die did still keep quite a few Brandy vocals, though, which I can only imagine added fuel to the feud fire. How did Brandy get into the decades long feud with Mariah and JLo though? Well, she posted a picture with Carrie in 2017 and captioned it, hashtag she knows me, to which Carrie confirmed the comments, I sure do. This exchange might mean nothing to the average person, but to JLo fans, this was a declaration of war. See, back in the early 2000s when JLo was starting to become a major name and Mariah Carey was releasing hits left and right, Carrie was on a red carpet and the topic moved to Lopez. To which Carrie replied with, I don't know her. Such a simple sentence, and yet it ignited decades long feuds. So that's what JLo fans believe Brandy was referencing with her hashtag caption. But that one little comment on Carrie's part could not have possibly been the thing to ignite the feud. Maybe the straw that broke the camel's back, but it certainly wasn't the first thing to happen between the pair. The first big step was probably, if you look at it from Mariah Carey's perspective, when JLo stole a never before sampled song from her ahead of her album release. That was pretty bad. The song that had never been sampled before was Firecracker by Yellow Magic Orchestra. Mariah wanted it for her upcoming song, Lover Boy, so she of course applied for a license. The only thing was her ex-husband must have hated her because he also applied for the same song and unfortunately for Carrie, beat her up. So JLo's track, I'm Real, got the sample and it also featured vocals from another singer named Shailene Thomas. Presumably this fiasco is what sparked the flames of the feud. Now first up we have to talk about her music theft. It's no secret that Jennifer Lopez has been accused of stealing or borrowing background tracks and vocals from other artists for years. Now, one of the stars who accused her of doing this was Usher in 2005. He claimed that she stole a song that he cast aside while recording his hugely successful album called Confessions. Usher claimed that JLo's single Get Right is actually a re recorded version of Ride, a song that he co wrote the year before, which was only available online. He said, quote, I hate it, but I'd better be getting some of the publishing rights or else. I didn't put it on my album because I couldn't get it right, but I didn't expect JLo to just take it. 
And apart from being accused of stealing the same sample song that Mariah Carey used for Loverboy, JLo was also given songs that were initially intended for a shanty. Which is why a lot of people claim what happened between the two artists was straight up music theft. In September 2001, Lopez released I'm Real from her second studio album, JLo, that she worked with Iv Gotti. But the song was already recorded and mixed with Ashanti's vocals, which is why you still hear her in the background vocals in Lopez's version. Moving on to the embarrassing feud with her makeup artist. Scott Barnes, who's worked for JLo for the last 20 years, has had to deal with so much of her crazy hot and cold behavior. In the mid 2000s, she essentially banished him after rumors surfaced that someone had leaked info to the press about her and Mark Anthony's secret marriage ceremony. Speaking on the Jeff Probst show in 2012, and when asked about how JLo treated him, Scott said, It was like I had the plague. Interesting enough, eventually she she ended up giving him his old job back after learning the truth, but apparently failed to apologize for being so cold and ruthless towards him. I mean, she literally cut him off without a word and blamed him for the leak without even confronting him. Barnes went on to say, I went right back to work with her and we never spoke about it again, which is even weirder. Now the funny thing is, her celebrity makeup artist would go on to work with her for another 6 years and insisted that they remained on good terms despite the fact that she ghosted him and didn't even even apologize. Next we have sharing the stage. JLo didn't hold back when it came to her opinion on sharing the stage with Shakira at the 2020 Super Bowl halftime show. In her newly released documentary called Halftime, she labeled it as the worst idea in the world. If I was going to be a double headliner, they should have given us 20 minutes, that's what they should have effing done, she said. Basically it turns out that Jennifer was frustrated with the FNL for booking two headliners and making them share the same amount of time that any soul solo performer would receive, as opposed to doubling it and giving the women extra time to shine. As a result, fans slam the artist for coming off as entitled. While it's true that they only gave the performers 6 minutes each, the action packed show garnered immense praise from fans across the globe, with many fans commending the woman for showcasing their Latin heritage so brilliantly. What JLo was really mad about though is that previous solo headliners like Beyonce and The Weeknd received 14 minutes to perform. But judging Judging by her complaints, it's clear that she feels offended that they even asked her to share the stage at all. Next we have the cheating allegations. Jennifer Lopez and Ben Affleck have had an on and off again romance that has been going on since the 2000s, with fans even nicknaming the couple Benifer. Now I mean these two just got married after they first got engaged nearly two decades ago. But the timeline of their relationship is a huge red flag and include alleged cheating. So in July of 2022, Lopez filed for divorce from her second husband, Chris Judd, citing irreconcilable differences. But this news broke just months after Lopez had to wrap the movie Jilji along her then boyfriend Ben. Even though she vehemently denied cheating rumors, Ben took out an ad in The Hollywood Reporter gushing about Lopez before her divorce wasn't yet finalized. In fact, even Chris Judd's father, Larry, spoke out against the couple and accusing JLo of being unfaithful to his son. He insinuated that the affair started during the filming of the GLG, quote, I thought Mr. Affleck would honor a married woman and not just go right into the trailer, and added that she'd be happier if she'd just tell the truth, and no one in her little circle is going to say one negative thing about her. But we'll never really know the truth of what happened. Now this brings us to our next point, the Mark Anthony romance. Celebrity Gossip magazines could not get enough of the power couple in the early 2000s. They were absolutely everywhere, and it seems like fans loved the pairing. But their beginnings as a couple were super questionable to say the least. Anthony married former Miss Universe Dana Nera Torres in 2000 while Lopez was dating Ben Affleck around the same time. But the on again off again couple picked their romance back up when Anthony was still married to Dayanara. So less than a week after Anthony's divorce was finalized, the couple surprised fans by getting married in a small casual ceremony in her Beverly Hills home in early June. It really begs the question of whether or not JLo was some kind of homewrecker because the timeline of the rekindled relationship seems really off. I mean, he actually broke Dana Era's heart as she said, You go through hell. I cried until there were no tears left, until I was numb. I didn't want to eat. I didn't care to get dressed or take a shower. I just wanted to lie there. Now, Anthony's feelings for Jennifer might have been there all along because the two had a history, but he should have put more thought into who he chose to marry in the first place. So, in a way, they're both at fault. And now, let's talk about the insensitive comments. 
So to give some background on why everyone felt that JLo was trashing belly dancing. A part of the 2020 Super Bowl performance featured young dancers sitting in glowing cages, which many people assumed represent the immigrant children in cages at the US border. But JLo apparently had a hard time convincing the NFL to do this and said, I'm trying to give you something with substance, not just us out there shaking our effing asses and effing belly dancing. She went on to say that she wanted something real, something that's going to make a statement, something that's going to say we belong here and we have something to offer. Now if you're confused as to why this was controversial, it's essentially because she compared the art of belly dancing to just shaking your butt for the hell of it. In fact, that particular line was shared across Twitter and people were big mad. It was just a little culturally insensitive to say, considering that the dance has long been associated with Middle Eastern cultures and that's something that Shakira has become known for, using it to channel her father's Lebanese Syrian Arab roots. Next up we have a voice the Bronx. This one train wreck of an ad campaign led to people openly mocking both Chrysler and Jennifer Lopez. Now, the central premise of the ad was that sometimes Julo will drive through her old hood in the South Bronx in a Fiat 500 just to stay inspired. Although it sounds ridiculous, the marketing campaign obviously tried to draw on the singer's famous Jenny from the Block era. Most people recognize the song, in which she pays tribute to growing up in the Bronx, which has been a solid part of her image since the 90s. In fact, the singer even titled her debut album on the 6, which is a clear reference to the New York subway train. Now, a press release at the time stated that she'd be traveling through the streets of Manhattan to the Bronx where she grew up. But the ad backfired when the smoking gun reported that Lopez never actually went to the Bronx to film the ad and that a body double stand in and was used instead, calling it, quote, it is such a breathtaking assemblage of hoary urban cliches, and that was putting it lightly. Next, we have the movie line interview. The infamous movie line interview in 1998 that could have almost ruined JLo's career was truly worse than you can imagine. She was 27 at the time and fresh off the success of her film Selena. Now she basically decided to trash all other celebrities that were big at the time and try to trivialize their career and contribution to the industry. In fact, when asked about Madonna, she actually said, Do I think she's a great performer? Yeah. Do I think she's a great actress? No. Acting is what I do, so I'm harder on people and they say, Oh, I can do that. I can act. I'm like, hey, don't spit on my craft. Now, this is so ironic because JLo would go on to do both music and acting for the rest of her career, and critics also trashed her acting on the big screen. Also, at the time, Madonna had been a star for longer than JLo, so there was really no comparison there. And when Gwyneth Paltrow was brought up, Jennifer almost seemed to laugh and made it clear that she didn't take her fellow actress's career seriously, saying, tell me what she's been in, I swear to God, I don't remember anything she was in. Some people get hot by association. I heard more about her and Brad Pitt than I ever heard about her work. Yikes. Moving on to the accusations of racism. 20 years ago, Lopez was approaching a full actualization as an entertainer, but a single from her second album, JLo, almost derailed her career entirely. The Murder Inc. remix of I'm Real, which features Ja Rule and owned the radio in 2001, was ruined by the N word she drops in her final verse. Now, the issue was that the song was an instant hit, so much that 10 years later in 2011, Billboard gave it the sixth spot on its 40 biggest debuts of all time. List. But rightfully so, people were outraged by her use of the loaded term. Not only because she's a Latina artist, but at her level of success where she has a platform and sets an example to young fans, using such a derogatory word is at best offensive. But as the accusations of racism started to mount against the star, she eventually spoke out to defend her actions on the Today Show. For anyone to think or suggest that I'm racist is really absurd and hateful to me. Although many people think this is not an excuse, it was later revealed that the track was actually written by J. Rule himself, and he encouraged her to say it. And lastly, we need to talk about the awful reasons she had a maid fired. Now, this one is really indefensible. Jennifer Lopez allegedly got a German hotel maid fired for asking for an autograph. Prey Dojo was a staff member at the luxury Melia Hotel in Dusseldorf, Germany during Lopez's stay in 2012. She was a big fan of J. Lo and worked up the courage to knock on the star's hotel door to ask for an autograph and was promptly turned away. Prey claims that she was relieved from 
from her post the day after the incident. She told The Sun, I am an incredibly big fan, so I took all of my courage and rang the doorbell to get an autograph, but I was rejected by two assistants at the door. A day later, the cleaning company that employed me at the hotel called and said that Miss Lopez had complained. I was fired right there on the phone. If the incident really happened, it's hard to ignore the irony when you remember that Jennifer played a hotel maid in the movie Made in Manhattan. Now, after receiving a rightful amount of backlash, the pop star wrote on Twitter, Come on, thought you knew me better than this. Would never get anyone fired over an autograph. First I've heard of this was on Twitter. Hashtag hurtful. Coming in number 10 today, we have the Grammys argument. Seems like one TikToker is shutting down all the speculation that Ben Affleck and Jennifer Lopez seem to be upset with each other at the Grammys. Probably to gain clout for her page, but whatever works, works. As she went on to share her experience as a seat filler at the Sunday show, where she sat in a temporary vacant seat next to the stars. While a video shows the couple having a little argument at the table, the TikToker would then say that there was more to the story as to why Ben was looking a little gloomy at the event. When the TikToker explained the situation, she would say, JLo was showing Ben Affleck her phone when she was like, oh my God, honey, look Look at this meme circulating about you. And apparently Ben was like, oh God, this again. Other than that moment, apparently the couple was actually really lovey-dovey throughout the show and that it never made her think that the couple was headed towards a divorce. However, in the video where it showed Jennifer looking at Ben telling him to stop, look more friendly, look motivated, prove otherwise. And it has us all wondering what he may have whispered in her ear that made her snap. And we really need to interview everyone around them to get to the bottom of this question. Number nine. Schedules and family. Trouble is already brewing in JLo's and Ben Affleck's relationship, and their hectic schedules could be the reason behind it, as it has forced them to spend a huge chunk of time apart. An inside source has lifted the lid on the couple's whirlwind romance, which has caused them to claim that the sudden change of Ben and Jennifer being miles apart has taken a toll on their relationship. Even before the two got married, just weeks leading up to the wedding, as both of their children started to feel unsettled. But the real factor that caused the tension between the two stars is their hectic schedules. With both having pretty successful careers, it has forced them to spend a huge chunk of their time apart, which has left Jennifer in tears at times as she misses Ben so much. The couple has also had to deal with the stress that comes with merging two families together. And now that the stress has started to form tensions between them. And while the world has been delighted at the fact that they got back together after almost two decades, their hectic schedules and family could lead to the ultimate breakup Hollywood has ever seen. Hey my little peaches, are you liking this video so far? If so, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to that channel. Number eight, motorcycle collection. Post honeymoon things are quickly beginning to turn sour between Ben and Jennifer as the newlyweds have been at odds and have been fighting nonstop over everything from Ben's bad habit to his clothing choices. However, back in October, Radar Online would learn that JLo even took a jab at her husband when she decided to get rid of Ben's beloved motorcycle collection. An inside source was then revealed to the media outlet that JLo even had Ben's most prized motorbike collection cleared out while they were away without even telling him as she thought it would be unsafe to do so. So she decided to completely blindside Ben on the matter. After Ben found out about the matter, he and JLo got into a pretty epic fight, which caused JLo to yell at him and she even pointed her finger, which caused the insider to tell the outlet makes people wonder if she mistakes him for a dog. Number seven. Not wearing a wedding ring? Back in January, according to rumors that were making headlines on social networks, they would claim that Ben no longer wears the engagement ring he has with Jennifer Lopez, which would leave fans to question if the pair was headed towards a divorce sometime soon. And to intensify these rumors even more, the actor would soon be shown hiding his left hand from the paparazzi while he was captured walking in the city of Los Angeles with a nice coffee wearing a blue puffer jacket. Not to mention, the actor could also be seen rocking a depressed look as he wore glasses and hid his hand in his pocket. This would then start to generate all kinds of comments on social media networks since the couple celebrated not one, but two weddings to celebrate their union. And now they are already making headlines as inside sources claim things aren't going so well between them, but being caught without your wedding ring 
isn't exactly a good look. Number six, getting sober. Back in January, a video would start to go viral on TikTok after it showed Ben Affleck talking about his addiction with alcohol in the past. While he went on to protest to Jennifer that he hasn't been drinking when they attended a party, in the clip it would show Ben and Jennifer attending an after party for the Hollywood premiere of JLo's new movie, Shotgun Wedding, on January 18th. As Jennifer's hit track, Let's Get Loud, is heard playing in the background, Jennifer is seen holding a wine glass as Ben yells over the music, I didn't drink anything, okay? Jennifer is then seen lifting the glass while maintaining eye contact with Ben as she cautiously takes a drink before placing it down as her husband shouts at Jen. As the video has started to go viral, it has sparked a major debate among users and a number of users would slam Jennifer as they suggested that she was being unsupportive to Affleck by drinking while others claimed that she was just testing the drink to see if there actually was anything in it as she was worried Ben is falling back into his old alcohol addiction habits and she's scared he might enter into a rehab program again soon. Number five, the past. Today it seems like the world can't stop talking about Jennifer Lopez and Ben Affleck's reunion, but it seems like the pair's past might be coming back to haunt them as neither can trust each other due to their long history. When the pair first broke up after it was hinted Ben had some major chemistry with his on-screen partner, Jennifer Garner, Ben would later call off his engagement with Lopez and Mary Garner. And in some interviews, it would prove that Ben causes more harm to the woman around him as he likes to later gush about them to the press and he often talks about how much he regrets causing them harm until everyone forgets how awful he truly was to them. As JLo claimed that the two broke up because of having a public relationship, it was really hard on them. She would also refer to the relationship as self-destructive and that Ben crushed her soul when he pulled out of the wedding that she took so much time to plan just to hit rock bottom when she found out he got garnered just shortly after. Not to mention, Ben even chirped her to the press after he told the press that he blamed all his troubles on JLo and that Garner saved him, but now the tables have turned. It makes you wonder what part of their past still haunts them. Number four, bad habits. While Jennifer always tries to understand and support Ben through all of his problems, when she asks Ben to support and understand her, the actor simply just acts indifferent and only focuses on his feelings without caring about what his wife feels. Jennifer as a result has been left feeling a little sad because she fears that Ben might even fall back into his same old patterns. Ben who has already gone to rehab several times due to various vices has overcome a lot but now he is smoking heavily and this is apparently a situation that Jennifer is not really pleased with. It's gotten to the point where she's even had to talk to Ben's team where she has urged them not to give him any more cigarettes but he has ignored his team and his wife on the matter and he's even been caught out in public sneaking in some smoke time which has caused JLo to be on edge and she is now at the point she is losing hope on Ben fixing his bad habits and that this could be one of the reasons she files for divorce shortly. Number three, too hopeful. You know when they say if something is meant to be it will come back to you? Well that's exactly what happened to Jennifer Lopez and Ben Affleck and while the couple seems to be true believers when it comes to that statement, they seem to be a little too hopeful when it comes to the relationship this time around. When the two first got back together, they saw the spark they knew they both had still and they dove quickly back into their relationship. 17 years after, they went their separate ways and called off their engagement in 2004. And since they have gotten remarried, they spend a lot of their time talking about what went wrong in their past, which is hashtag a giant red flag. While both are really hopeful that their relationship this time around will last as they want to spend more time putting in effort and that they believe that they are both more mature and are on the same page, it just seems like they are too invested in each other's lives and they're focusing on all the problems instead of all the good that can come with this relationship. Number two, the long honeymoon phase. All good things can't last forever and it seems like JLo and Ben have finally reached the end of their extremely long honeymoon phase, which lasted longer than any other honeymoon phase. While he was caught whispering something into his wife's ear right before, JLo could be seen jerking away and snapping at him after a lip reader confirmed Jennifer said, Stop, look more friendly, look motivated. Ben then responded by saying, I might. However, just before their public spat, they were in a six month honeymoon phase that just looked too unrealistic because no one is that gooey in love and happy. And if you are, something is lying deep within and you're hiding it and that's the scary part. It's like dating someone you know at the beginning and how they're like really nice and you know something's up and then six months later, they're a completely different person. And coming in at number one today, we have the gloomy reactions. Ever since since Ben got with J 
although he's been looking pretty gloomy and every time he's caught out in public looking a little upset, he starts to go viral as his fans try to figure out what might be making Ben seem sad. You would think after dating Jenny on the block, you would be pretty upbeat, but just days after tying the knot, Ben was seen with JLo looking pretty angry, like someone had stolen his lunch money or even asked him to physically growl out loud. But since the emergence of Sad Affleck started to go viral last January, the meme hasn't shown signs of slowing down and it's clear something concerning is going on with the star. At number 10 we have Jennifer's dismissal of bad teacher actress Cameron Diaz when she made the comment that she believes Cameron is a quote, lucky model who's been given a lot of opportunities and how she wishes she would have done more with them. In turn, Cameron made a statement that Jennifer's behavior on set was rather cold as she pretty much ignored her. She also described Jennifer as being someone who was hard to work with. As a clapback, Cameron further pushed that JLo should stick to her day job of singing. However, in the same Jennifer interview, it wasn't just Cameron that she came for. She also took shots at fellow actresses Gwyneth Paltrow and Winona Ryder. For Gwyneth, Jennifer said, tell me what she's been in? I swear to god I don't remember anything she was in. Some people get hot by association. I heard more about her and Brad Pitt than I ever heard about her work. On Winona, Jennifer recalled, I was never a big fan of hers. In Hollywood, she's revered. She gets nominated for Oscars, but I've never heard anyone in the public or among my friends say, oh I love her. At number 9 we have radio show host and interviewer Howard Stern, whose reasonings for not liking JLo comes in many forms. For one, he hates her music. Howard's typical musical vibe is 90s rock and grunge rather than early 2000s pop. But not only does Howard not enjoy Jennifer's music, he's also bashed it in the form of jokes on numerous occasions despite his attraction to fairly few pop songs in the past. In summary, it was Howard Stern's show co-host Robin who made claims while they watched her on the floor music video that radio stations were hesitant to play the song since she hadn't been charting for a while. Apparently to further this point, he described that the relevance of JLo being a judge on American Idol kind of forced the song down consumers throats and Howard later accused Jennifer of being self-absorbed because the single debuted on American Idol. Howard further bashed her Super Bowl performance and even ridiculed Jimmy Fallon's praises for it as well. There was also the incident where Howard claimed he spent the entirety of his run-in with his friend Mark Anthony who was married to Jennifer at the time being completely ignored. This further pushed the established reputation of Jennifer being a snotty diva. Howard's last straw was Jennifer's interview where she was asked if she found Howard attractive and remained silent while expressing a puking expression. Since since then, Howard has not let up on the insults about her attitude, music, and business choices whenever she's brought up on his show. At number 8, we have Gloria Estefan's shade to Jennifer for her halftime documentary spiel about performing with Shakira for the 2020 Super Bowl. When Gloria admitted she chose not to participate with no regrets, she blasted Jennifer's comments about their experience when she sat down with Andy Cohen on Watch What Happens Live in June. Quote, Imagine what JLo would have said if I was third. I literally would come out, done, shake your booty, and out. It was their moment. Plus I didn't want to go on a diet in December. This was in light of JLo's reaction to Shakira co-headlining the sports event. Benny Medina said in the film that it was insulting of the Super Bowl to request two Latina artists when one had already historically done the work. Yet Jennifer was the one who was upset about splitting her time on stage, stating that they only had five minutes to sing all their desired songs accurately. Quote, We have to have our singing moments. This is the worst idea in the world to have two people do the Super Bowl. While Jennifer and Shakira communicated about their upcoming performance, Jennifer added, they said 12 minutes. I got a good confirmation that we could have an extra minute or two, so now we're at like 13, 14 minutes. I think Shakira, what we should have is you should have half the time and I should. If it was going to be a double headliner, they should have given us 20 minutes. That's what they should have effing done. At number 7 we have singer Brandy, who was apparently picking sides when the lopez Carey feud was at its peak. Brandy had shared an Instagram photo of her embracing Mariah in 2017 with a short 3 word caption of hashtag she knows me. Brandy's followers were on her like water as soon as the post was uploaded, speculating that the caption had everything to do with Mariah's famously memed, I don't know her. In response, Brandy denied there being any drama, rearranging the caption to then say, I swear I don't know what the fuss is about. I love this pic and everyone thinks I'm throwing shade. At who? This is funny. Can't take this one down. I love this picture. And whenever I'm throwing shade, it's not questionable. You know that I am. Brandy also continued unapologetically with, I've met her several times like the several seats that should be taken. She does know me. And if things couldn't get any shadier, Mariah 
Mariah made sure to clear things up in Brandy's comments with a simple I sure do. At number 6 we have JLo's first husband Ohani Noah. Despite their marriage being short lived and ending as of 1998, it seems Ohani still can't stand Miss Jenny from the block. Their 9 month marriage apparently wasn't all that great as Ohani had been working hard to slander his ex wife's name on a number of occasions. Back in 2006, Ohani published a tell all titled The Unknown Truth, a passionate portrait of a serial thriller. JLo halted this project with a lawsuit and claimed that Ohani was breaking their confidentiality agreement. Jennifer won $545,000 in damages and Ohani was given a court date which forbid him from criticizing, denigrating, casting in a negative light or otherwise disparaging Jennifer. In the next 3 years Ohani threw himself back into news outlets when he made threats to release a sexually suggestive video of Jennifer that was filmed during their honeymoon and resulted in another $10 million lawsuit. In 2016 his appearance on Million Dollar Matchmaker saw Ohani claiming he loaded the blame on Jennifer for their split and how he was looking forward to spending a lifetime with her before she chose her career over him. At number 5 we have former NBC World of Dance TV host and mentor Jenna Dewan who sat on the panel with then executive producer Jennifer. Although the two dancers and celebrities seemed fine during the 2017 reality dance competition tapings, their animosity behind the scenes apparently ran deep. An unnamed outlet source once stated on Jenna's behalf that Jenna quote can't stand Jen's over the top theatrical fakery. Adding that Jen never fails to ham it up when the cameras are rolling and she hijacks the show. It seems she'd prefer if Jenna just stayed in the background. Every situation, even off camera, is micromanaged by JLo and Jenna feels very excluded. This alleged feud seemed to be squashed fairly quickly though when Gossip Cop reached out to a show producer and one of Jenna's reps and was informed that the reported beef was misleading. However, given Jennifer's past, can we really be sure of this? At number 4 we have actress Rosie Perez. She and Jennifer apparently had lifelong ties with one another that seemed great on the outside. But both Puerto Rican dancers raised in New York have zero love for each other according to Rosie's 2014 Handbook for an Unpredictable Life Memoir. In it, Rosie discusses working on In Living Color with Jennifer in a wickedly horrible light. Quote, All the girls were coming into my office complaining how she was manipulating wardrobe, makeup and me all to her advantage. Despite Jennifer dipping from ILC after 2 seasons, Rosie stuck with her words of Jennifer supposedly keeping the flame of their feud burning for years after they parted. The words on the pages of Rosie's book portrayed Jennifer to be a two faced person who would crap on Rosie one minute but then act super sweet like nothing happened between them the next. At number 3 we have artist Rihanna who seemed to be unimpressed by Jennifer after the star posted herself chilling with Rihanna's on again off again reported love interest Drake backstage at her 2016 Winter Vegas show. Naturally Jennifer's snap captioned look who rolled up at my show tonight to say hi, hashtag love him, sparked massive dating rumors and it probably didn't help that Jennifer uploaded a follow up pic of her and Drake bear hugging and looking overly comfortable snuggling up. While many were unconvinced about the headlines, Rihanna was seemingly not here for any of it, which is why she reportedly went on to dub Jennifer as a desperate traitor. According to an unnamed insider who spoke to Touch, Rihanna had felt like she experienced the ultimate betrayal by Jennifer since they once had a tight knit bond where Rihanna could seek solace in Jennifer for her relationship. Rihanna did not publicly address their rumored issues, however, she did seem to throw some shade when she suddenly hit the unfollow button on JLo's Insta. At number 2, we have Nikki and Jennifer's heated back and forth jabs that started with an exchange during a 2012 American Idol episode where Nikki performed and Jennifer was a judge. When the female rapper completed her set, she boldly asked, I was hoping maybe I could come back and be a guest judge. JLo, can you scoot over a bit? To which Jennifer immediately quipped, I don't know if there's enough room for the both of us. Nikki seemed to hold on to that comment when she attempted to smooth things over back with the Hollywood reporter, saying, She didn't seem to be having it, but she's gonna have it. We were just joking around. However, in 2015, things were still just just as messy when Jennifer opened the American Music Awards performing a medley of songs which included Nikki's hit Anaconda, Nikki seemed to be unimpressed by her performance as the camera gave away her emotionless expression which told us everything we needed to know as one fan hinted. Nikki came to Jennifer's defense at that point though when she fired back with a tweet to a fan explaining, I'm looking at my own face on the screen when I'm looking to the right. I turn back and look at her. At number 1 we have the iconic I don't know her rivalry that has been carried out for years now. This beef has been ongoing since the early 2000s, with both stars being repeatedly questioned on whether or not they actually like each other. It seems they can't really decide though. Host Danny Cohen brought up their beef on his show in 2014, where Jennifer nonchalantly played the situation off with, I don't have a feud against her at all. I've read things she said about me that were not the greatest, but we don't know each other. I would love to meet her and I would love to be friends with her. However, she told Wendy Williams the exact opposite in 2016 for her show, explaining, She's forgetful, I guess. We've met many times. Andy went straight to the source to speak with Mariah that same year and in response Mariah reiterated, I don't know 
her. What am I supposed to say? Jennifer, of course, took this as major shade, and when people were flaming Mariah for her quote, disastrous New Year's Eve performance that winter, Jennifer threw some shade of her own by liking a post referring to Mariah's performance as a train wreck. It seems Mariah got the final laugh though because she made it rain shade in her 2020 memoir, The Meaning of Mariah Carey, where she revealed her feud with Jennifer on top of slamming Jennifer's ex husband and former CEO of Sony Music, Tommy Mottola, for allegedly attempting to ruin her career with Jennifer's help. Mariah claimed Tommy tried to sabotage the Glitter soundtrack, Firecracker, and pushed that the movie's lead single, Lover, did not go unnoticed by Sony executives. Mariah also added that Sony rushed to make a single for another female entertainer on their label. But rather than naming Jennifer in the allegation in her sampling of Firecracker on I'm Real that same year, Mariah just concluded with her infamous comment, finishing her statement with, After all that ish, Lover Boy ended up being the best selling single of 2001 in the United States. Number 10, Mariah Carey. This celebrity feud is legendary, so it's only fair that we start off with this one. JLo and Mariah Carey have been at each other's throats since the early 2000s. In fact, most people remember the iconic line that Mariah told a German reporter, I don't know her. Although it sounds hilarious, Mariah has maintained her negative opinion of JLo all these years. For example, an interviewer once asked her what she thought about Beyonce and Jennifer Lopez and she responded by saying that they don't even belong in the same category for a very specific reason. Well, it's hard. You can't really put those two people in the same category because one is in a really different generation. They just started singing later. But when you talk about Beyonce, I think she's wonderful. She's great. She's a talented person. But it seemed that she forgot to compliment JLo as well. A few years later, Carrie spoke to Andy Cohen and doubled down on her comments. Quote, I don't know her. What am I supposed to say? It looks like it'll take a miracle for these two iconic performers to ever be on good terms. Number nine, Rihanna. There are several celebrities who can't stand Jennifer Lopez, but one of the biggest critics of the iconic singer is Rihanna. These two former best friends had a serious falling out in 2016 for the oldest reason in the book. They were fighting over the same guy. Before the feud began, Rihanna and JLo were friendly to each other and had no reason for animosity. But trouble started brewing right after Rihanna and Drake broke up. They had had a summer fling that same year, which was pretty casual, but it definitely still counts. Wanted. Girl code was broken when JLo started getting close with Drake almost immediately after. But the feud really became public when Jennifer posted a photo of her and Drake hanging out backstage at her show in Las Vegas with the caption hashtag love him. In fact, the two were even spotted hugging and fans quickly realized that something very shady was happening. An inside source close to the star said that Riri felt like she had suffered the ultimate betrayal and called Jennifer's behavior desperate. It must must have been accurate because in December of 2016, she suddenly unfollowed Lopez on Instagram. Number 8, Gloria Estefan. Cuban American superstar Gloria Estefan was originally supposed to be performing at the 2020 Super Bowl alongside fellow Latina pop stars JLo and Shakira. But after seeing JLo's new documentary called Halftime, where the singer went on a rant about having to share the stage with Shakira, Gloria put her comments on blast. She didn't seem to agree that it was the worst idea ever to have the artist share the stage and explained why Lopez got it wrong on what what happens live with Andy Cohen. Quote, look, this is the bottom line. You have very little time, like 12 minutes or something, to get things on and off the set. So could you do it with one person? Yes. But I think they wanted to throw a Miami and Latin extravaganza and they tried to pack it in as much as possible. The Grammy Award winner also confirmed that she chose not to participate for a reason, seeing as JLo got so worked up about having two people perform. Quote, okay, and imagine what JLo would have said if I was the third. I literally would come out, Donna, shake your booty and out. But she went on to insist that it was their moment and that she didn't want to go on a diet in December anyway. Number seven, Nick Cannon. The Wild and Out star took a cue from his ex-wife Mariah Carey's famous phrase to throw shade at Jennifer Lopez during his guest appearance on The Wendy Williams Show. While discussing Hollywood crushes during the Hot Topic segment, the 41-year-old first named Carey, his ex-wife and mother to their two twins, Moroccan and Monroe. Quote, number one, Mariah, the amazing mother, superstar, singer. He then went on to name Halle Berry and Naomi Campbell as his second and third choices. A producer then suggested JLo as an option.
option and he just responded with, I don't know her. After the audience erupted into laughter, the host added, that was a joke for the lambs. Shout out to the lambs. As Kerry refers to her fans as the lamely. Cannon made it clear who he supports in the ongoing battle of the divas and naturally he sided with Kerry. So we can't really fault him for that. It's been a bit of a running joke for years that Mariah wasn't kidding and didn't actually know JLo personally when she gave that interview. But it was too late to clear the air as the classic I don't know her line has gone down in history as one of the best ways to shade someone. Number 6 Rosie Perez Both Jennifer Lopez and Rosie Perez have served as inspirations to the Latin community for over two decades, but they haven't always gotten along. They met back in 1991 during an open casting call for In Living Color. At the time, Perez was the show's choreographer, and Lopez was auditioning to become a member of the dance troupe known as the Fly Girls. Her, her audition was unsuccessful, but Perez saw a star quality in JLo and actually pulled some strings to get her in. But after she was in the group, it became clear that Lopez didn't get along with her fellow dancers. According to Perez, she was labeled as a diva right away. All of the girls were coming into my office and complaining how she was manipulating wardrobe, makeup, and me, all to her advantage. Perez said that at first she didn't believe it, but then JLo screamed at her saying, I know I'm good, I'm better than any of these girls and you know it. What's worse is, after JLo left the show and made it big in the music industry, she went on talk shows trashing her former choreographer. Perez also implied that JLo ghosted her. Quote, I called her up, she wouldn't pick up. Frustrated, I left her an irate message on her answering machine. Instead of calling me back and hashing it out like friends do, she went on a major talk show and reiterated my lashing. Number 5. Brandy Brandy has had a public feud with Jennifer Lopez since 2017, and according to Kiwi Report, she made made it clear that she supports Mariah Carey going against JLo too. Basically she posted a photo of herself on Instagram hugging Carey with the hashtag she knows me. The caption was super perfect and a great reference to that famous I don't know her comment. So the whole thing tells us that Brandy is totally teaming with Mariah. Brandy's post exploded on social media and Lopez fans immediately took offense to it. Mariah saw the backlash and chimed in to Brandy's photo commenting with a simple I sure do. But the singer was quick to defend herself from hate comments and edited the caption shortly after posting it with quote, oh my god what happened? I swear to goodness I don't know what the fuss is about. I love this pic and now everyone thinks I'm throwing shade. At who? This is funny, can't take this one down. I love this picture and whenever I'm throwing shade it's not questionable. You know that I am. She totally doubled down on dissing Jennifer and siding with Mariah adding quote, also I've met her several times. Like the several seats that should be taken, she does know me. Number four, Nicki Minaj. These two have allegedly been feuding since 2012. It all started when Nicki was performing one particular. It all started when Nicki was performing on one particular episode of American Idol at the same time that JLo was sitting on the judge panel. In a rather awkward moment, Nicki asked if she could come back on the show as a guest judge and asked JLo to scoot over. As a Latina artist hit back, she said, I don't know if there's room for both of us. It was one of those joking moments that seemed like there was something else behind it, but nevertheless, the two seemed to be just joking around. Even though Nicki told a reporter backstage, Quote, she didn't seem to be having it, but she's gonna have it. Okay, so now we're jumping to 2015, when fans swear that Nicki shaded JLo for performing her song at the American Music Awards. As she was performing a small part of Anaconda, the camera cut to Nicki in the audience, looking less than happy with the rendition. The clip showed her emotionless face and made it seem like she didn't approve of the way her song was being used. Number three, Ryan Seacrest. This incident gives Ryan every reason to hate JLo because it's pretty bad. Ryan Seacrest worked alongside the singer on American Idol and the two quickly became friends. But all that seemingly changed when the talk show host revealed that he flew down to Miami to celebrate her milestone 50th birthday, only to be denied entry at the door. Ouch. He recalled the whole story on Live with Kelly and Ryan and explained that he flew down from New York for only a few hours because he had to make it back in time for the next morning show. But when he finally arrived, the doorman told him, you're not on the list. To which he responded, clearly there's a mistake. She invited me personally. But upon being denied, he checked the list and couldn't find his name. The doorman just asked him to wait, made a quick call and was able to confirm that Seacrest was indeed on the guest list. But the host went on to say that he 
was the first person there and no one really got turned up until after he left. It would have certainly been a little embarrassing to say in the least. Number two, Cameron Diaz. Throughout the years, Jennifer Lopez has been known to speak negatively about her fellow actors and it looks like it may have come back to bite her. During an interview in the late 90s, JLo explained that Cameron Diaz was just a lucky model who was given opportunities. She did mention that Diaz can be good when directed, but Lopez's past comments about Cameron's career allegedly made things super awkward between them when they were when they both had to buckle down and work together in the 2012 comedy What to Expect When You're Expecting. Several anonymous sources on the set of the film claimed that the two stars did not get along at all during the shoot. In fact, it was reported that Cameron said the singer was a nightmare to work with. Quote, she even said that Jen should stick to her day job, meeting American Idol and singing. According to the insider, JLo demanded to eat at specific times, no matter what, and stops working when it suits her. And she had her assistant run over to her with food. This is what allegedly drove Cameron crazy. Another source claimed that the co-stars actively avoided one another while filming and tensions were thick. Number 1. Ojani Noah The former couple were married on February 22, 1997 and got divorced barely one year later, in January of 1998. It was so long ago that you would think Ojani has moved on from the relationship, but apparently he's still holding on to a bit of resentment. In fact, Jennifer's former flame was out to make a buck off their brief marriage by trying to expose revealing videos from their honeymoon. Ajani was even hauled into court after he started planning a tell-all movie based on the revealing home footage called How I Married Jennifer Lopez, The JLo and Ojani Noah Story. The result? Well, she sued him for a whopping $10 million and demanded a permanent court order blocking her ex from making any videos public. Ajani also threatened to write a tell-all book unless he was paid $5 million by the the singer. His unpublished book alleges that JLo had multiple affairs, including one with Mark Anthony, during the 11 months that they were married. But a judge was not having it and awarded her $545,000 in damages and quashed the book, ruling that it violated a 2004 deal not to publish details of their relationship. Her team calls the movie an outrageous attempt to make money and received substantial compensation. So it's clear that he's still a little bit bitter. Number 10, sharing the Stage. J Lo didn't hold back when it came to her opinion on sharing the stage with Shakira at the 2020 Super Bowl halftime show. In her newly released documentary called Halftime, she labeled it as the worst idea in the world. Quote, if it was going to be a double headliner, they should have given us 20 minutes. That's what they should have effing done. Basically, it turns out that Jennifer was frustrated with the NFL for booking two headliners and making them share the same amount of time that any solo performer would receive, as opposed to doubling it and giving the women extra time to shine. As a result, fans slammed the artist for coming off as entitled. While it's true that they only gave the performers 6 minutes each, the action packed show garnered immense praise from fans across the globe, with many fans commending the women for showcasing their Latin heritage so brilliantly. What JLo was really mad about though is that previous solo headliners like Beyonce and The Weeknd received 14 minutes to perform, but judging by her complaints, it's it's clear that she feels offended that they asked her to share the stage at all. Number 9. Cheating Allegations Jennifer Lopez and Ben Affleck have had an on-again, off-again romance that has been going on since the 2000s, with fans even nicknaming the couple Benefa. I mean, these two just got married this year, after they first got engaged nearly two decades ago. But the timeline of their relationship is a huge red flag, and included alleged cheating. So in July of 2002, Lopez filed for divorce from her second husband, Chris Judd, citing irreconcilable differences. But this news broke just months after Lopez had wrapped the movie G. Lee alongside her then boyfriend Ben. Even though she vehemently denied cheating rumors, Ben took out an ad in The Hollywood Reporter gushing about Lopez before her divorce wasn't yet finalized. In fact, even Chris Judd's father, Larry, spoke out against the couple and accused J. Lo of being unfaithful to his son. He insinuated that the affair started during the filming of G. Lee. Quote, I thought Mr. Affleck would honor a married woman and not just go right into the trailer, and added that she'd be happier if she'd just tell the truth and no one in her little circle is going to say one negative thing to her. But we'll never really know the truth of what happened. Number 8. Music Theft The star has been accused of stealing and 
borrowing background tracks and vocals from other artists for years. One of the stars who accused her of doing this was Usher in 2005. He claimed that she stole a song that he cast aside while recording his hugely successful album called Confessions. Usher claimed that JLo's single Get Right is actually a re-recorded version of Ride, a song that he co-wrote the year before which was only available online. He said, quote, I hate it, but I'd better get some of the publishing rights or else. I didn't put it on my album because I couldn't get it right, but I didn't expect JLo to just take it. And apart from being accused of stealing the same sample song that Mariah Carey used for Loverboy, JLo was also given songs that were initially intended for Ashanti, which is why a lot of people claim what happened between the two artists was straight up music theft. In September of 2001, Lopez released I'm Real from her second studio album, JLo that she worked on with Irv Gotti. But the song was already recorded and mixed with Ashanti's vocals, which is why you can still hear her background vocals in Lopez's version. Number seven, makeup artist feud. Scott Barnes, who worked for JLo for the past 20 years, has had to deal with so much of the star's crazy hot and cold behavior. In the mid 2000s, the star essentially banished her longtime makeup artist, Scott Barnes, after rumors surfaced that someone had leaked info to the press about her and Mark Anthony's secret marriage ceremony. Speaking on the Jeff Probst show in 2012, when asked about how JLo treated him, he said, quote, it was like I had the plague. But interestingly enough, eventually she ended up giving Barnes his old job back again after learning the truth but apparently failed to apologize for being so cold and ruthless towards him. I mean, she literally cut him off without a word and blamed him for the leak without even confronting him. Barnes went on to say, quote, I went right back to work with her and we just never spoke about it again, which is even weirder. The funny thing is her celebrity makeup artist would go on to work with her for another six years and insisted that they remain on good terms despite the fact that she ghosted him and didn't even apologize for it. Number six, the Mark Anthony romance. Celebrity gossip magazines could not get enough of the power couple in the early 2000s. They were absolutely everywhere and it seemed like fans loved the pairing. But their beginnings as a couple were super questionable to say the least. Anthony married former Miss Universe Dianara Torres in 2000, while Lopez was dating Ben Affleck roughly around the same time. But the on again off again couple picked their romance back up while Anthony was still married to Dianara. So less than a week after Anthony's divorce was finalized, the couple surprised fans by getting married in a small, casual ceremony in her Beverly Hills home in early June. It really begs the question of whether or not JLo was some kind of homewrecker because the timeline of the rekindled relationship seems really off. I mean, he actually broke Dianara's heart and she said, quote, you go through hell. I cried until there were no tears left until I was numb. I didn't want to eat. I didn't care to get dressed or take a shower. I just wanted to lie there. Anthony's feelings for Jennifer might have been there all along because the two had history, but he should have put way more thought into who he chose to marry in the first place. So in a way, they're both at fault here. Number five, insensitive comments. To give you some background on why everyone felt that JLo was trashing belly dancing. So a part of the 2020 Super Bowl performance featured young dancers sitting in glowing cages, which many people assume represented the immigrant children in cages at the US border. But she apparently had a hard time convincing the NFL to do this and said, quote, I'm trying to give you something with substance, not just us out there shaking our effing asses and effing belly dancing. She went on to say that she wants something real, something that's gonna make a statement, something that's gonna say we belong here and we have something to offer. Now, if you're confused about why that was so controversial, essentially she compared the art of belly dancing to just shaking your butt for the hell of it. In fact, that particular line was shared across Twitter and people were big mad. It was just a little culturally insensitive to say, considering the fact that the dance has long been associated with Middle Eastern cultures, and it's something that Shakira has become known for, using it to channel her father's Lebanese Syrian Arab roots. Number four, avoiding the Bronx. This one train wreck of an ad campaign led people to openly mock both Chrysler and Jennifer Lopez. The central premise of the ad was that sometimes JLo will drive through her old hood in the South Bronx in a Fiat 500 just to stay inspired. Although it sounds 
sounds ridiculous. The marketing campaign obviously tried to draw on the singer's famous Jenny from the Block era. Most people recognize the song in which she pays tribute to growing up in the Bronx, which had been a solid part of her image since the 90s. In fact, the singer even titled her debut album On the Six, which is a clear reference to the New York subway train. A press release at the time even stated that she would be traveling through the streets of Manhattan to the Bronx where she grew up. But the ad backfired when the smoking gun reported that Lopez never actually went to the Bronx to film the ad and that a body double stand-in was used instead, calling it, quote, such a breathtaking assemblage of urban cliches. And that was putting it lightly. Number three, the movie line interview. The infamous movie line interview in 1998 that could have almost ruined JLo's career was truly worse than you can imagine. She was 27 at the time and fresh off the success of her film Selena. She basically decided to trash all the other celebrities that were big at the time and tried to trivialize their career and contribution to the industry. In fact, when asked about Madonna, she actually said, quote, do I think she's a great performer? Yeah. Do I think she's a great actress? No. Acting is what I do. So I'm harder on people when they say, oh, I can do that. I can act. And I'm like, hey, don't spit on my craft. It was so ironic because Jayla would go on to do both music and acting for the rest of her career, and critics also trashed her acting on the big screen. Also, at the time, Madonna had been a star for a lot longer than JLo, so there was no real comparison there. And when Gwyneth Paltrow was brought up, Jennifer almost seemed to laugh and made it clear that she didn't take her fellow actress's career seriously. Quote, tell me what she's been in. I swear to God, I don't remember anything she was in. Some people get hot by association. I heard more about her and Brad Pitt than I ever heard about her work. Yikes. Number two, accusations of racism. 20 years ago, Lopez was approaching full actualization as an entertainer, but a single from her second album, JLo, almost derailed her career entirely. The Murder Inc. remix of I'm Real, which features Ja Rule and Own Radio in 2001, was ruined by the N bomb that she drops in her final verse. The issue was that the song was an instant hit, so much so that 10 years later, in 2011, Billboard gave it the sixth spot on its 40 biggest duet of all time list. But rightfully so, people were outraged by her use of the loaded term, not only because she's a Latina artist, but at her level of success, where she has a platform and sets an example to young fans, using such a derogatory word is at best offensive. But as the accusations of racism started to mount against the star, she eventually spoke out to defend her actions on the Today Show. Quote, for anyone who thinks or suggests that I'm racist is really absurd and hateful to me. Although many people think this is not an excuse, it was later revealed that the track was actually written by Ja Rule himself, and apparently he encouraged her to say it. And number one, Fire to Maid. This one is really, really indefensible. Jennifer Lopez allegedly got a German hotel maid fired for asking for an autograph. Fredo Daj was a staff member at the luxury Melia Hotel in Dusseldorf, Germany, during Lopez's stay in 2012. She was a big fan of JLo and worked up the courage to knock on the star's hotel door in Dusseldorf to ask for an autograph and was promptly turned away. Prey claims that she was relieved from her post the day after the incident. She told The Sun, quote, I am an incredibly big fan, so I took all my courage and rang the doorbell to get an autograph, but I was rejected by two assistants at the door. A day later, the cleaning company that employed me at the hotel called and said that Miss Lopez had complained. I was fired right there on the phone. If the incident really happened, it's hard to ignore the irony when you remember that Jennifer played a hotel maid in the movie Made in Manhattan. After receiving a rightful amount of backlash, the pop star wrote on Twitter, quote, come on, thought you knew me better than this, would never get anyone fired over an autograph. First I heard of this was on Twitter, hashtag hurtful. Madonna. Superstar Madonna has been in the game since the 80s and established plenty of enduring relationships with other entertainers who've come before and after her. But that doesn't mean she hasn't had her moments where she's thrown someone the cold shoulder. In this case, Jennifer Lopez definitely deserved it because she dissed Madonna's whole career in that infamous movie line interview in 1998. Lopez was 27 at the time and fresh off the success of her film Selena. It was then that she decided to boast about her own talent in comparison to Madonna. Quote, do I think she's a great performer? Yeah. Do I think she's a great actress? No. She also added, quote, acting is what I do. So I'm harder on people when they say, oh, I can do that. I can act. 
I'm like, hey, don't spit on my craft. Those comments were pretty bad considering that Madonna has been a star for a lot longer than JLo and at the time of the interview, there was almost no comparison between them. It seems like Madonna held on to those remarks for quite some time because in 2009, she went on David Letterman and implied that Lopez tries to copy her by studying her looks on stage. Gwyneth Paltrow. At the time, Lopez was still fresh off the success of Selena and Anaconda, and she was explaining how she felt she was grouped into what she called the bottom of the A-list actresses. Paltrow was a star on the rise at the time, with many films under her belt such as Seven, Great Expectations, and Shakespeare in Love, which earned her a Best Actress Oscar in 1999. When Lopez was asked about Paltrow, she almost seemed to laugh and made it clear that she didn't take her fellow actress's career seriously. Quote, tell me what she's been in? I swear to God, I don't remember anything she was in. Some people get hot by association. I heard more about her and Brad Pitt than I ever heard about her work. If you have the goods, there's nothing to be afraid of. If somebody doesn't have the goods, they're insecure. I don't have that problem. Although Paltrow took the high road and never publicly criticized the star, when JLo started dating her ex-boyfriend Ben Affleck, she was reportedly very upset about the pairing and said that she didn't think Jennifer is right for him. It's easy to see why she felt that way. Scott Barnes. If you want to see just how long Lopez can hold a grudge, just ask celebrity makeup artist Scott Barnes, who's worked for her for the past 20 years. It's important to note that not all of JLo's feuds and shade throwing has been directed towards the rich and famous. The star essentially banished her longtime makeup artist Scott Barnes after rumors surfaced that someone had leaked info to the press about her and Mark Anthony's secret marriage ceremony. Speaking on the Jeff Probst show in 2012, Barnes revealed that the woman he considered a friend cast him aside for an entire year until it was confirmed that someone else was responsible for the leak. Quote, it was like I had the plague. Interestingly enough, JLo did end up giving Barnes his old job back again after learning the truth, but apparently failed to apologize for being so cold and ruthless which sounds exactly like something she would do. The celebrity makeup artist, who's also lent his talents to Hollywood stars, including Gwyneth Paltrow, added, quote, I went right back to work with her and we just never spoke about it again, which is even weirder. The funny thing is, Barnes would go on to work with her for another six years and insisted that they remained on good terms, despite the fact that she ghosted him. He wasn't even guilty of the leak, but she cut him out of her life for a whole year. Talk about insanity. Salma Hayek. In that same interview from 1998, Lopez did not enjoy being compared to Salma Hayek. Quote, we're in two different realms. She's a sexy bombshell, and those are the kinds of roles that she does. I do all kinds of different things. And as if trashing her career wasn't enough, the supremely confident Lopez also claimed that Hayek had been telling a few lies about the fact that she had been offered the lead role of Selena, the 1997 film based on the life of slain Texas-born superstar Selena Quintanilla. She went on to say, quote, it makes me laugh when she says she got offered Selena, which is an outright lie. If that's what she does to get herself publicity, then that's her thing. The comments were incredibly rude and ignorant of JLo, even though she claimed they were taken out of context in an interview that she did a few years later. But in 2020, Salma Hayek opened up to Andy Cohen on Watch What Happens Live, saying that in the 90s, she was offered the role of Selena before Jennifer Lopez, but she turned it down. Quote, they offered it to me like a week after she died. It was a little distasteful. They were already planning on making this movie. So it goes to show you how gracious Selma Hayek is because she wanted to be respectful to Selena's passing. Ashanti. While Jennifer Lopez has landed herself several platinum selling hits since her rise to fame with her debut album, she is no stranger to causing controversy regarding how she ends up getting her songs. While Ashanti has never openly admitted to sharing a feud with Jennifer Lopez, the R&B songstress has certainly hinted that she was often overlooked because of the success. Aside from being accused of stealing the same sample song that Mariah Carey used for her song Loverboy in the same year, Lopez was also given songs that were initially intended for Ashanti, which left Ashanti feeling irritated given that she had just landed her first taste of success in the music industry around that same time. Then in in September of 2001, Lopez released I'm Real, lifted from her second studio album with Gotti. But 
He eventually handed the track over to Lopez even though the song was already recorded and mixed with Ashanti's vocals, which is why you still hear her background vocals in Lopez's version. Ashanti said, quote, It felt bittersweet because I was really excited because it was with JLo, you know what I mean? But I was so mad at Irv because I was like, you know I wanted that record. The whole situation between the two stars always seems bizarre and unfair, and many people believe that JLo outright stole Ashanti's vocals and passed them off as her own. Usher JLo and Usher had a pretty big feud in 2005 over alleged music theft. The star had been accused of stealing or borrowing background tracks and vocals from other artists for years, and Usher had something to say about this. He claimed that his R&B rival stole a song that he cast aside while recording the hugely successful album Confessions. Usher said that JLo's single Get Right is actually a re-recorded version of Ride, a song that he co-wrote last year which was only available online. When asked about the whole ordeal, the then 26 year old said, quote, I hate it, but I'd better get some of the publishing rights or else. I didn't put it on my album because I couldn't get it right, but I didn't expect JLo to just take it. In fact, this whole situation was partly due to producer Rich Harrison, who co wrote the track with Usher and later decided to use it during recording sessions for JLo's upcoming album Rebirth, using the exact same vocal pattern. So JLo's song Get Right is actually a reworking of a beat Usher had created for his own album. When he scrapped his song Ride, parts of it made it into Jennifer's track and created one of the biggest dance floor hits ever. At least Usher was vocal about it and as a result chose not to work with JLo for several years following. Howard Stern The controversial radio host Howard Stern is JLo's biggest critic and just doesn't understand her appeal. He said so himself on his super popular radio show. Not only isn't he a fan of her music, but Stern has publicly claimed that Jennifer's been rude to him on multiple occasions despite his friendship with people close to her, saying that he does not respect her stuck up attitude. One of the main reasons why Lopez will never go on the Howard Stern show is because he has attacked everything from her career choices to her appearance. Both were judges on America's Got Talent at the same time, and in a red carpet interview with HLN in 2012, he said that Jennifer Lopez was more interested in promoting her career than being a proper judge. Quote, it helped her career. She got very far. She suddenly got back on the charts and the show was good for her, and it became more about JLo. In 2016, Howard compared JLo's music to that of a homeless woman who sang a nonsensical song, and as a prank, Howard's staff took the song to pedestrians on the street and tried to pass it off as her latest hit. One of the harshest things he's ever said, though, was during an interview with JLo's ex P. Diddy, where he slammed her looks by claiming that Diddy got out at the right time due to her aging. Eva Mendes There was a time where Eva Mendes and JLo comparisons were inevitable. Similar to Lopez, Eva's career began in the 90s. She started out featuring in music videos with stars like Will Smith, Aerosmith and Pet Shop Boys. They were both Latina actors making waves in the entertainment industry in the 2000s. They've both dated A-listers and starred in big budget blockbusters, delivering standout performances that stole the show. However, when these similarities were brought to Eva's attention, the actress was very offended at the idea and felt that it was insulting to be compared to Lopez at all. In fact, Eva even felt that her approach to acting was more serious than Lopez's in a major way and added that JLo manages her career like a business as opposed to caring about her art. Quote, I would like to think I will have a more serious career than JLo. We may be both of Latin origin, but that's where the comparisons stop. She manages her career like the head of a big corporation, whereas the only thing I care about is becoming the best actress possible. While Mendez has made it clear that she never respected JLo's career, at least her comments don't sound too personal and were probably made because she was just sick and tired of constantly being compared to the other Latina actress.